So here we go. Now we are learning this week's Torah portion, today's Torah portion. <clears throat> so we have the interesting, amazing story of Yosef and his brothers. And Yosef gets sold by his brothers. They don't even know if he's alive or not. And um, <clears throat> they, they even think that they killed him. They don't know. Yeah. And little do they know that he really was supposed to have been killed. He was thrown into a pit of scorpions and snakes. And they, uh, um, they took him out from this pit and they sold him to the, uh, eventually he, they sold him into captivity. And eventually he went into prison. And from prison, all of a sudden he just jumped out to be like the king of the whole world. And now everyone in the world is coming to Egypt for bread. There's no more bread in the world. There's no food in the world. And ya Yaakov and his, Yaakov sends his sons also to go there and bring back bread. So they go down there and Yosef says, you're spies. You're all spies. They said, what do you want, spies? We're just coming to buy some food. So he says, uh, you, you said you have another brother. Where's your other brother? He said, well, you know, he, he got, we don't, his name was Yosef. We don't know where he is. So he said, well, what if I told you I have him in, in captivity and I'm not going to give him to you? He said, well, we'd be willing to fight. He said, see, I told you, you're coming here to destroy the country. So now we're continuing. This is a continuation. Those who are speaking to his brothers, if you're speaking to the Emes, the truth. Then one of your brothers is going to be held here in the place where I was holding you in prison, because he imprisoned all of them for three days. I'm going to take just him. And he said, then he finally takes Shimon. You know? Go to home and bring some, I'll give you some food, and you can bring some food back to your home. Well, what's that? What's the purpose of that? Purpose is, and then your little, you said you have a little brother, right? Taviol, I bring him to me. And then your words will be true. Below Tomutu, and then you won't die from hunger. And you should do so. Rashi says, you will be verified your words. What did you say? You just came to get bread. So let's see if it's true. Yasuhim, they all did it. What does it mean they all did it? Lamad Chakis teaches you, says Rabbeinu Bechaye, that they devoted themselves and they said, we are all before you, take whoever you want. They said, okay. They did so. They said, okay, take one of the brothers. We'll do whatever you want. First of all, they needed food. If they weren't going to get food, they would, they would die anyway. And now Yosef is making really very difficult for them. <clears throat> And they spoke one to the other. The brothers spoke one to the other. And they said, We're all guilty. Because of our brother, Yosef. What we did to our brothers. right? And this was already like 17 years ago. Uh, 13 years ago, I'm sorry. 13 years earlier. He was 17 years old when they threw him into the pit. We saw how he was suffering. He begged us to leave him alone. Yosef, therefore, this is, this is what's happening to us. In other words, they didn't really regret it until right now, even though there was some indications of that. Said, now they said, now we really regret it. All this is probably as undoubtedly happening to us because of Yosef. I mean, they saw it wasn't happening to anybody else. They were the only ones that were having being given a hard time. So they realized that they were now getting paid back from heaven on the fact that they sold Yosef. So they thought. Ruvain said, now if you remember the story back then, all the brothers said, let's kill him. And Ruvain said, let's not kill him. Let's throw him into a pit. And Ruvain had an idea that he was going to uh, wait until the brothers weren't around and then go back to the pit and pull them out and send them home. 
And then he figured the brothers would cool off a little bit and he would save Yosef. But that's not what happened. In fact, before the brothers separated and went to other places, as they sold Yosef, Yehuda said, let's sell him to the Midianim. Let's sell him. So they sold him. Reuven came back to the pit to pull out Yosef, and Yosef wasn't there. So Reuven said, <clears throat> Hello, Amarti, I told you. Lemur, and I said, Al techtu don't sin with this child. Don't kill him. Below Shamatim, and you didn't listen to me. The Dam Damo need rush. And also his blood is now being demanded. So the Rebbe has a very interesting sikh about this, and he says, What in the world was Ruvain doing? I mean, the brothers, they regretted it. They said we're really sorry, and we didn't mean it, and they're admitting that they they said all of a sudden Ruvain pipes up and he says, It's not my fault. It's all your guys' fault. I told you to listen to me. You didn't listen to me, right? The only reason in this trouble is because of you, not because of me. What did he have to say that for? Right? Why, what, what was he? It's not going to improve the situation any for anybody. Just making things worse, right? They're already admitting that they sinned. They said we, we did sin. To, and he comes and he says, you sinned because you didn't listen to me. I told you not to sin. And you did the sins. And not only that, you're also responsible for his life. So the Rebbe says like this, the brothers, they regretted. Why did they really regret what they did? They regretted what they did because they realized they were getting paid for it. They realized that bad things were happening to them. And therefore, they really regret. They realized they must have really made a bad mistake to God. And therefore, they sinned, so they're getting punished for it. And that, that was the motivation for the brothers. The brothers woke him up. Ruvain came and he said, listen, my friends, my brothers, that's that's not really the, the, the ultimately good reason to do tshuva because you're getting punished. The reason to get, and, and if you wouldn't get punished, you wouldn't feel so bad. The reason to do tshuva is because you sinned against God. You went against God. That's the why. Forget about the punishments. You went against God. Even if you didn't get any punishment, even if you sinned against God and you only got good things, right? you became successful and they made you into the king, who knows what. But still, you sinned against God. That should make you really feel bad. That's what Reuben was saying. You want to feel bad? You should feel bad because of what you did to Yosef. But even more, you should feel bad because of your relationship between you and God. You were supposed to be innocent. You were supposed to be faithful to God. Do what God wants. God doesn't want to go around killing people just because you don't like them. <clears throat> okay, really, there's a midrash. It's a little bit deeper than that because it says that really the brothers made a judgment, and they decided that Yosef was threatening them. That Yosef was a big threat to them physically, that if, if their father believed them, that it could be that they would, <clears throat> they would lose their lives. And, and at least they would lose their power. So they decided that Yosef was a threat. He was a real threat, and therefore he was guilty. He brought also uh, a bad reports. He spoke Lush and Hora to the father. Shalom. He brought Lush and Hora to their father. And that they decided that um, speaking Lush and Hora is like Avodah Zor, it's like idolatry and these terrible things. So they decided that he was uh, guilty. The problem is they didn't realize, they didn't take into consideration that he was too young to get punished. He was only 17 years old. And punishments like that are only after you're 20. Okay, anyway, whatever the problem is, they, they their, their real regret was what they did to Yosef and not the relationship that they broke with them and God. And that's what Reuven was trying to remind them of, your sin. So says the Rebbe. That's what Rabino Bahaya says. He says that I told you you shouldn't have <coughs> sinned with Yosef because he did it because he was a child. He wasn't really fully responsible for what he did. And not only that, all this <coughs> dumb old, all the, the cruelty that you had when you threw him into a pit that's filled with scorpions. So that's a sign of cruelty. So you should feel bad for two things. Number one, according to what he says, number one, you should because you judged him improperly. And number two, because you will you were cruel you even if you judged them properly it shouldn't have been from 
vengeance and cruelty. It shouldn't have been emotionally motivated. Okay, as they're talking between themselves, they didn't know that Yosef heard because there was a melitz between them, because it was a translator. Yosef put a translator between them. Who was <clears throat> When they were speaking with him, there was a translator that was in the middle. And the translator would translate everything that they said <clears throat> into Hebrew. Into the, I mean, everything that they said in Hebrew, it would translate it, I'm sorry, from Hebrew into into Egyptian. So they figured Yosef didn't understand what they were saying. And therefore, when they were speaking with him, the Melites, he would let them know, he knew the language of Hebrew and he would speak to them, etc. Who is this Melites? This is Menashe, his son Menashe. He was the translator that went between them. So they figured that Yosef didn't understand what they were saying. Yosef, meanwhile, he hears them discussing this and he really feels uh, bad. You know, he, he realizes that they're really and just broken hearted over here. <clears throat> and he says, By Yisab Melem, he turned from them and he cried. And then he came back to them and he spoke to them and he took Shimon and he put him into prison in front of their eyes. A prison. And they all then, oh, it's a and then Yosef commanded that they should be put into their bags or their suitcases food and that they should give the money back that they, they, they paid money for food. They should give, the money should be given back and that they should also, in addition to that, they should also have food for the way. And this was done to them, right? So now they're traveling back. And they, they left, they went back. Now they're going back to the land of Canaan <clears throat> to their father Yaakov. They're trying to figure out how can we let him know that Shimon is taken prisoner and that now the king over there is a really hard man in Egypt. They don't know it's Yosef. He wants Benjamin also. Okay, one of them opens up his bag in order to give food for his donkey in the Malone, in the place where they rested on the way going back. And he saw there's the money. Yosef gave the money back to them that they paid for <clears throat> the grains and other foods. And they didn't know he gave it back to them. It was, that's what he commanded, they should give it back. Now they're really afraid. No, they don't know what's going on. <clears throat> he put all of the money into one who put it into all the money in Levi. They put it into their bags. Okay, now they're really confused. They don't know what's happening. <clears throat> Yosef is driving them crazy. On one hand, he said, you're a bunch of spies. Then he puts them all in jail. Then he lets them all go and he takes Shimon. And then he says, you have a small brother, you have to bring him to me. Right? That's going to break their father's heart. Then they're going back and they don't know, does Yosef like them? He doesn't like them. He'll keep his word. He won't keep his word. Why does he want to see Benjamin? It's so important to him to know these things. There were people. There were just normal people coming to buy bread like all the other millions of people in the world were coming to buy bread or grains or whatever they were buying. And all of a sudden, Yosef picks them, says, you're a bunch of spies. What's, what, what's happened? They can't figure it out. Now they go back, they're going back, and they see that all the money that they paid is all in their sack. <clears throat> one said to each one of the brothers, said to the other, my money was given back, it was returned to me. And also, here, and here it is, it's written in, in, in my, my sack. And their hearts went out and they were very afraid and they said what is this why is god doing this to us why is he doing this to us the money is going back now yosef is going to run after us and he's going to say hey, you stole the money at 
said the only reason he sent us back is because he wants to, when he put, he put the money there. We didn't steal the money. Obviously, he did this in order to accuse us of something. He's going to say, you stole all the money. What's going to be? He said, Elohim did this to this. Elohim. Elohim is the aspect of God, of justice. In other words, God is doing to us like what we deserve. But he's confusing us. He's threatening us. He's driving us crazy. Now, every, now we're all afraid. Yosef is going to come back with, and who knows, an army of a, a thousand men and say, you stole the money, you stole my grains. They're all worried. They don't know what's happening. They all went to Yaakov. They returned. They returned. They went back to Yaakov in the land of Canaan. They told him everything that had, that had happened. And they said, The man the, who's the leader or the, the ruler of the land of Egypt, he spoke to us hard, hard. And he's, he accused us of being spies. They were spying out the land. And he said, and we said to him, no, we're truthful people. We're not spies. Like the, re, re, relating the whole thing to Yaakov. And we're too... Twelve brothers were the sons of one father. One of the brothers is not here. This brother Yosef, he's, he's gone. We don't know what happened to him. The smallest one is with our father in the land of Canaan. That's what we told him. Yaakov was listening intently to all this thing. And they said, and, and, and they, they continue. And this man who was the Adonai Oris was the leader of the land of Israel. Oh, Stephen Lech, how are you? He said, now I'll know that you're telling the truth. One of your brothers leave with me and the for the hunger of your house, here, take some bread, take some grains or whatever, and go. That's what he said, take whatever you need and go home. Now, they're, this is all what they're relating to their father, right? They're all relating this to their father. <clears throat> and then Yosef said to us, Yosef, they don't know what's Yosef, the king over there said to us, and bring at your small brother to me. And then I'll know that you're not spies. And rather that you are truthful people. Then I'll give your brother back because he took Shimon as, as a prisoner. And then you can start to do business here in the land of Israel, in the land of Egypt. Everything is going to be fine. Tisharu usually means like schara means selling, but he says tisovavu. That that's that you can you can walk around freely in the land, and says Rashi, and that's also the land of a salesman, a salesman sachrua, because they're going around all the time. Sachor sachor means to go around all the time and trying to sell their wares. <clears throat> and they said and as they were emptying out their bags their 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 uh, their duffel bags <clears throat> each person had a money the money that we gave their and In the East Sur Kaspo Visako, every all of a sudden everybody saw that everybody had money in their in their bag. That Soros Kaspeam came of Aviam Firu, and they were all afraid. Now then they really became afraid. Right? Before the money was only in one. Now all of a sudden they see that everybody has their money in their sack. Yosef, Yaakov has been listening to all this and he's going wild. Yaakov is going crazy. Yaakov says, Bayomer Yaakov Avihem Otishikaltem. You've made me into a mourner. Yosef and then Yosef is not here. Shimon is not here. No, you want to take Benjamin. 
kulana. It was like all of you are gone. Rashi. Yaakov said, Shikaltemoti, you made me shikul. What is a shikul? Shikul means that you killed him. This explains that what that you, Oti, you made me into a mourning father. This teaches you that Yaakov suspected that they killed him or that they sold him. Right? That they sold him. And those they suspected with, with Shimon. Maybe you killed Shimon also, just like you did with Yosef, like you sold Yosef. She called him. <clears throat> All anybody who loses a child is called Shakul. Shakul. My name. They still don't know. They're not gonna know that it's Yosef until next week, next week's Torah portion. Ruvain said to his father, <clears throat> listen, I have two sons. Tamit, you can kill them both. If I don't bring Shimon back to you. Now give Benjamin to me. And then I'll re-bring re him back to you also. Don't worry about it. Okay, this is a bit of a foolish thing for him to say. What good is it possibly going to do to Yaakov if he kills the two sons of Reuven? What does it mean? But it's just coming to show that Reuven was so serious about and so sincere that he would was promising he would bring Shimon and Benjamin back. Yaakov said, listen, don't take my son with you. Don't take Benjamin. His brother already died, and he's alone remaining. Now you have to remember again that Yaakov, all, he only wanted sons from Rachel. As far as he was concerned, when Yaakov went to <clears throat> Lavan to find a wife, he only wanted Rachel. That's all he wanted. He would have married Rachel, and then he would have stopped. He had no intention of marrying Leah. Leah was tricked. He was tricked with Leah. Okay, but it ended up that from Rachel, he only had two sons from Rachel. All the other 10 sons were born from uh, Leah and the other two handmaids. So he said, I only have one son left. If anything bad, bad, bad happens to him, the derech, asher telech, that you're going, horadatem et sevoti b'yagon sholah. You will bring me down in my old age in mourning to death. Shaol. Sometimes Shaol means death, sometimes it means hell. Shaol means. The afterward, sometimes Shaol means the grave. Just one moment. Yeah, Shaola, okay. <clears throat> this is only half of today's chita, so I wanted to do a bit more. <clears throat> okay, let's just do a little bit more. I'm sorry. Uh, I was there. Uh, 
All right, so that ends it. Yaakov, Yaakov says you're not going to go down, but nature is catching up with them. Harav Kavid Boritz. Hunger is getting stronger and stronger in the land of Canaan. And after all the food finished that they brought from Egypt, and their father said to him, listen, you got to bring some food because we're all going to die. And they said, Yehuda, Yehuda said to his father, Ha'ed bano ish. We can't do it. The man swore to us, and he said, you're not going to see my face. You're never going to see me again unless you bring your younger brother with you. Benjamin has to come with you. If you can, then send your brother with you. <clears throat> with us, I'm sorry, and then we'll go to go down and we will buy food. But if you don't want to send Benjamin with us, then we can't go down. What are we going to go down to Egypt for? We're just going to waste the trip. The man said that you'll never see me again if you don't bring your brother with you. Israel said, why are you doing this thing? Why are you making me miserable? To tell me, why did you tell him you have another brother? Why did you do it, said Yaakov? Why did you tell him? He said, because they said, the man asked us, about who we are and where we were born. And he said, do you have, is your father still alive? Do you have any brother? Do you have any brothers? And we told him all these things. We told him everything he wanted to know. <clears throat> That's when he said, bring down your brother. We never thought he would say, bring him. I want to see your brother. Yaakov said, uh, Yehuda said to his brother, Yisrael, to his father, he said, Take the son with me. Take, leave, send your son, Benjamin, with me. And we'll go. will live. And we won't die. I mean, what, what good is it going to do if we're all sitting here? What are you worried about that they're going to take Benjamin from us? If we all stay here, Benjamin is going to die also. Everyone's going to die. He's going to die also our brothers. Kamata, you're also going to die. All of the little babies that we have, everyone is going to. That's what he says. We're going to die in a breath. Benjamin, if I bring him now to Egypt, it's a doubt if he's going to be taken there. It's a doubt me, he won't be. But if we stay here, for sure we're going to die. There's no doubt about it. There's nothing to eat. Leave what's in the doubt and take what's sure. What's sure is, and what, what, what's doubt? The doubt is, are they going to take Yosef or not? Are they going to take Benjamin or not, right? In Egypt, will he be taken prisoner? That's what's a, a doubt. What's the certainty? The certainty is if we stay here, we're all going to die from hunger. Yehuda said, yes, it is. Yehuda continued and said, I will be hold as a certainty. I'm totally responsible for him. If I don't bring to you back, if I don't bring them back to you and show Benjamin back to you, then I will be a sinner all to you all of the rest of my life. That I don't want to do. And this convinced him. Rashi says, what does it mean I will show him to you? I won't bring him to you dead, but alive. And if not, then it means I will be sinning, calling him all the days, even after death, even in the afterlife. When he says all, I mean, when the, the Rabbi Nubachai sort of doesn't agree. With Rashi, he says, all the days means all the days of this life. And there was all of my life I will be called a sinner. 
and I will get the portion of the sinners. So Rashi says all the days means the world to come, and Rabbeinu Bechai says it means all of this world. In any case, Yehuda swore to his father, if I please give me Benjamin, if we don't go down there with Benjamin, then he's not going to he's not going to talk to us, and everybody's going to die from hunger. If I don't, I promise you, if I don't bring him back, then I'm going to be a sinner my whole life. I, I'll, I'll risk my life for him. Because if we hadn't waited, we could have already gone and come back twice. Yehuda says to his father. Yisrael said to their father, okay, this is what you do. You can go. Take from some of the fruits of the land of Israel and your vessels and go down and bring him a big gift. A little bit of tzori, a little bit of dvash, honey. It was different different types of vegetables and shkadim and, and almonds, etc. Would you bring to him? Rashi explains what this is. Rashi says, boat name, he says, I don't know what boat name is. In Israel, they call boat name uh, peanuts, but I doubt if that's what it was. <laughs> so this is the end. He said, go down and bring all sorts of gifts to this man and tell him <clears throat> and take money back, double portion of money that was in your pouch and tell him that you want to pay because maybe it was a mistake. Maybe somebody by accident, they put the money into the pouch without intention. Mishgan says, Rashi, Shemaha Mamon Alabayat Shahu Shogig. Maybe the money for the house, they, they they forgot it. And by mistake, they just left it in the in in the in your sacks. In your sacks. In other words, go and show Yosef that you want to be friendly, you want to be nice, you're not thieves, you're not murderers. And your brother, your young brother, you should take and go and return to Shuvah al and go back to the man. Go back to Yosef. And it says, and, and ya 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 Yaakov is speaking, and may God Almighty give you mercy in front of this man and he should send your brother back give your brother back on the Shimon and also Benyamin and me kasher shikalti shikalti and if God forbid Rashi kasher shikalti just like I lost already Yosef and Shimon also, I'll have to lose Benjamin also. Break my heart. But what can you do? Oh, Herschel, shalom. I'm sorry, Herschel, but today we're going to have to cut the class short. I have to leave in just another five minutes. I really wanted to leave 10 minutes earlier. Okay, one more sentence. One more sentence. The people took this... <clears throat> All the brothers, in other words, the brothers that were left. How many brothers are there already, right? So you have, there's, th there's 13 brothers already. There's 12 brothers, I'm sorry. There's 13, 12 brothers. And Shimon is not, is in prison. And Yosef, there, so there's only 10 of the brothers. In other words, one of them is Benjamin also. All these brothers, they took the gifts that their father told them to take. And they took a double portion, double portion of the money. Took huh? their hands, and they took Benjamin and yeah, they I went see. and they went down to Egypt and finally they're standing in front of Yosef and now it's going to be we're building up to the to the big climax of this whole story that all the brothers are now standing helpless in the hands of Yosef the Rabbeinu Bechaya says the simple meaning is why it says that these people took the Mincha why does it say the brothers took 
Oros, this is to indicate that they walked quickly like men. In other words, they didn't walk like a group, like brothers. They went as quickly as possible, says Rabbi Nebuchai, also, because they were going into the land with a tremendous fear. And they were, they tried to not act like friends, one with the other. No one would think that when, when they went into Egypt, they didn't want to act like they were one big group because that sort of implied that they had a power, that they had some sort of a plan, some sort of a unifying factor between them that made them uh, threatening. So therefore they went just like Anashim. They went like people, not like brothers. According to the Kabbalah, why does it say Anashim? This is a hint to the 10 Harugim Malchus. This is a ten, hint at the, in, in, uh, in the future generations, right? In the, uh, after the destruction of the second temple. Second temple. So we're talking about now, this is like, you know, 1,500 years from now. There's <clears throat> going to be, we talk about it in the prayers of Yom Kippur. There are the 10 Harugim Malchus. There's the 10 um, martyrs, Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Tradion, Rabbi Shimon Gamliel. They took them all out and the Romans tortured them in, all in public. 10 of them. Umina Ketuvah Zeh, from this we can understand the him. It seems to imply also from the prayers of Yom Kippur that these 10 men that were killed, they were incarnations of these brothers of Yosef. Lochen Timsa he's Kirba Parsha Asari Pami. Therefore, it says in this Parsha, if you look, it says Rabbein Al Chaim, the word Anashim is mentioned 10 times. Kasher Abair, like I'm going to explain in the end with God's help. Okay, my friends, that is today's class. We've done the chitas of today in Chumash. And now the, it's building up to a big, big climax. And you have to re remember that all of this is just the laying the ground for the exile of the Jews in Egypt for 210 days. Uh, you're all invited tomorrow. We'll learn a sicha in the morning. 8.15 until 9 o'clock. Have a happy Hanukkah, everyone. God bless you all. And um, we'll hope to see you all tomorrow at 8.15 with Mashiach now. Shalom Ubrahah.